Hello everybody, my name is Lady Gear to you and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Scarlet Sword. This is my second try trying to record this horrible dungeon because the first time my capture card was being a complete and utter jerk and kept lagging for whatever reason. I have no idea what I was doing that, but this time we're going to be continuing on to super awesome things and beating this dungeon. I actually really do like this dungeon, it's a really cool area. Um, so, yeah. I like this dungeon. So, um, before I start, before I say anything else, I just want to point out that if you go in here, there is a fairy right there. On the first, on the first try, you be trying to get to this area. Um, I kept getting, I kept, the fairies in this dungeon just would not go in the bottle. Um, and they kept healing Link, even if he was like, uh, uh even if he was at full health. So, so, so it'd be all like, oh my god, stop healing me, be in the bottle already. <laughs> Eh, good times. But anyway, um, what we're going to be doing now is that um, we're going to be introduced to a new gaming mechanic. I don't actually know what these are called, I'm just going to call them water plants. I think that might be their name, but I might be wrong about that. Um, the water plants, they are a lot like how, they, how the water jars are like in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In that game, if you threw them, if you threw the jars in the fire lava thing, then it would um, make platforms that you can ride on the fire and stuff. And let me just say, um, this gameplay mechanic would have made the last part of Tomb Raider Anniversary so much more, e so much easier because of all the stupid lava traps in that in that game. I don't want to talk about that right now. But what I do want to talk about is how awesome this game, this dungeon is. Um, this is the second fire dungeon in the game, um, which is kind of cool and all. No. Um, hey, you're totally in my range. Wait, get out of here, stupid moblin. Some more your moblins right there. You want to be careful with because uh, if you're not careful with them, then you're gonna catch on fire. We set fire to the league. Watch them burn as I can't think of lyrics. I can't think of any lyrics to save the to save my life. But anyway, inside this treasure chest is a key, so let's go, just go go grab it. There's some more things over here. Um, let's take out our Colossus and aim it over there on those vines. They're very green, just like Link's tunic. I keep pressing the wrong button whenever I'm trying to go across that. That's the thing that always uh, gets me whenever I'm trying to use a Colossus is the... Well, I'll talk about it in a moment because there's a cutscene right here. <laughs> the accident blast! Whoa! Don't scare me like that! I thought you were one of those monster creeps! Oh, hey, what's this? You got yourself a swanky. What kind of word is that? That's, that's a weird word. Who are you anyway? What you doing here? I'm on a quest! Hmm, I getcha! Huh? Me? Oh yeah, the name's Gold! <laughs> oh my god. Um, on the, on my fi on the recording I had to scrap, um, the, his name Gold, uh, this, that was the first time that I, that I realized that his name was a pun of the word Gold. Um, I would never understood his name, but this previous file was like, Oh my god, his name is Gold! That's hilarious! And things like that. Why do I know? You yeah, might just surprise me. So here's the deal. Word in the tunnel is that there's a huge treasure hidden in these ruins. But nobody who's ever seen it has come back to tell the tale. Then how do you even know that the treasure is there? The countless treasure hunters have disappeared in here. Poof! Gone. As a treasure digger, I gotta warn you to just turn around and enjoy the many peaceful years of digging left to you. But you're gonna do this no matter what I say, aren't you? Pretty much. Alright then, I'm gonna let you in on an ancient treasure hunting legend passed them down among generations of Mogmas. Every Mogma worth a handful of dirt knows this one. Here we go! Here we go! You who seek the entrance to the king's treasure, look for the two statues that face each other. Away for rhymes! So you briefly jump into the mouth of the sleeping statue. Do this and the path will open before you. You remember all that? And you're golden. Say it again! No, I'm just kidding. Some of my guys are uh, searching around here for the treasure. If you get lost, holler at one of them. Okie dokie. So there's a door right here, so let's go inside. Oh yeah. If 
hear that noise in the background, it's either my fan that's going on, because that's turned on because it's a million degrees outside, or it's a super rude car outside! Yeah, you better drive off. Anyway, um, there's a mob, there's some marble moblins over here with some cursed uh, keys right here, so we need to destroy these dudes. Um, these cursed keys, just like those cursed frogs that we encountered in a previous video, I believe, um, these dudes will um, affect the status effect of us not being able to use our sword, which is the rudest status effect ever. It is so rude. Over here, there's a, there's a treasure chest over here if you want to go open it. There's not really that much use over there, but I, I just want to open all the treasure chests in this dungeon because I feel like it. I can do whatever I want to my channel. So arrows over there if you want them. These arrows are going to be very helpful for um, for this, throughout this dungeon. Um, not necessarily because they're going to be a whole lot of dungeon. Well, there are those water plants, but you can also use a swing saw and claw saws and things like that. Um, but the arrows are going to be pretty useful if you want to do the strategy of sniping your enemies from a distance. Um, but over here is a new gameplay mechanic, which is honestly one of the most awesome gameplay mechanics in the entire game. These fire hands right here will uh, raise the platforms you get to go across. This is one of those uh, kinds of gameplay mechanics that, they're, that I'm really happy, that I really like, but I'm also really happy that they didn't overuse it. Because if they did overuse it, that would not have, that would have, it would have really made, it, it would have really made the, um, what am I trying to say? It would have made the gameplay mechanic um, more annoying than fun, is what I'm trying to say. And right there, I just demonstrated the fact that you can use your whip to take away items. Um, I think I saw this before, but I just felt the need to sew it again because I'm awesome like it. And I think I'm gonna need some monster horns for a couple items that I want to upgrade in the coming videos that are gonna be, like, well, upcoming and stuff. And, ooh, an ornament skull! What I'm really hoping they do in Zelda U is that I really hope that um, they fix the whole, um, well not really fix, but in this game, and I think also in Twilight Princess, it was a lot more annoying in Twilight Princess, um, because they also did this with Rubies, but uh, basically, whenever we, we, you uh, rebooted the game, um, it would go through the same cutscene of you uh, getting the getting a certain collectible the first time, and what the? Who let me on fire? Oh, there's a moblin over there. I don't feel like you. Push the right button, dude! Lady gear to you, push the right button. The A button is the one that makes you go off ledges and stuff. It's not the B button, it's the A button. Get that through your head. God, I always push the B button, and it always activates the cross ups again. I don't know why I do this. But anyway, over here, it's gonna be sort of a mini boss, but it's not the exact mini boss of the dungeon, we're gonna be facing a new type of enemy that's a that's basically just a reskin of another one. Um this is the Dark Lizophos. Dark Lizophos instead of uh, um instead of uh, uh breathing fire they were breathing cursed uh element which is a very rude um which is a very rude status effect when you're facing this kind of enemy. So be careful with this guy. You can also use your sealed bass to um to knock him off balance like that which is super awesome. Um, but it's not super awesome, it's when they counterattack you, stupid jerks. Please be destroyed already. Yeah, you're destroyed! You're not destroyed yet! Come on, be destroyed already! Don't make me look like a moron! Okay, thank you! I kinda wish that we had a different type of lizard tail whenever we got those things, because it is a different type of enemy, but... Whatever. <laughs> Whatevs! <laughs> that reminds me of something. In, um, I've been playing a lot of Splatoon lately, um, and in Splatoon there are these two characters called the Squid Sisters, and the Squid Sisters, um, they're like, uh, they're basically like, um, the Splatoon, uh, pop stars of Inkopolis and stuff like that. And by the way, before I think I just want to say the most adorable things ever, but that's not the point. The point right now is that, um, when, is that when you start up the game, um, we start the game. They'll have this little cutscene where they'll be describing the, where they'll be describing the stages for the online battles and stuff like that. Um, the online battles, the the stages for the online mode changes every couple hours or so. 
uh, which, is, which is actually really cool, but that's not the point. The point right now is that, um, in one particular... Stop using that effect on me! What I'm trying to say, before I got rudely interrupted there, was that if you use... is, it, is that, um, the Squid Sisters would talk about how the, these uh, w these birds in this one stage are totes adorbs. This is one, honestly one of the funnier things I've ever seen in that game because I have a friend who says stuff like that, how she'll say Fabu instead of Fabulous and things like that. So that line of dialogue really reminded me of her and it was one of the funniest things ever. Um, speaking of Splatoon, that's a really great game. So if you haven't played that game yet, you definitely have to go try it out. It's, it's a really good reason to go pick up a Wii U. Um, but enough about that. Um, over here, there is a statue that's boulders in its mouth, so we need to blow up it. So we need to blow it up with a bomb, because if we try to do, if we try to activate the water plant before we uh, blow it up, then the water current will, the lava current will not go, will not be activated. So if you try to activate prior to this, then it's not going to do anything. So you want to activate that first, and then after that, you want to take out your bow and arrow, or your slick saw, or whatever you want to use, and and take it out and fire it at the plants. That hole over there, you see the rubies, and you can use your beetle over there to get some more rubies if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to, and I don't feel like it because I just don't want to do that. Now, Ray for me talking super fast. There's more Mobulets over here if you want to go fight them. It's a really good idea to go do that because, uh, well, um, you don't have to fight them later. And be just run away, you stupid jerk. I'm getting distracted a lot by these enemies in this in this dungeon. Um, I know I've said this before, but one of the more difficult things about us playing this game in particular is that um, is that with this game you really do have to concentrate on on it's re it's really a challenge of multitasking because uh, you have to concentrate on what you're talking about while trying to still make it while try while still trying to make it make sense if I for the lack of a better term you have to try to keep the conversation going while still focusing on the on what the enemies are doing because this game really does demand your attention when it comes to combat. Um, so, yeah. Over here, we need to use, um, there's a Mugma right there. We can't do anything with him right now. Um, but what we can do is that we can use our Gust Bellows uh, to blow away these lava things. Not entirely sure how this works. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's, I'm, it probably makes sense in the real world, but whatever. This is a Zelda game. It's not supposed to make sense. After we blow away all this ma all the magma over there, well, I guess the gust bellows will cool down the magma and turn it back into like regular rock, or regular rocks or whatever. But whatever, this is not a science. This is not me trying to explain scientific things. This is me. Let's playing Skyward Sword and getting a key, and doing some more super awesome cool things like that. And why do I keep blowing up a seal? I don't know why I'm doing that. But anyway, now that we've got the seal, there's, there's a key. We can go outside this door so that we can open the other door that that was locked and stuff. Aren't I just great at uh, explaining things? So, you may notice that there are some water plants dangling on ground level now. So what we want to do to get past them is that we need to... is that we need to cut them down um, if you're... You need to be careful because if you don't... If you're not being careful, then you will poke yourself to death and that is... Uh, and that's like the most unpleasant death ever, being poked to death. Over here, there is another fairy. If you want to go grab that, it's a really good idea to do. It's a really good idea to do that because the boss of this dungeon can be really difficult. But we're not going to be seeing that for a couple of videos. There's also a treasure chest right here if you want it. It has it contains 20 rubies, but um, it's not really all that important. What is important is that there are some staircases right there. It does not matter which one you go to. You're gonna be going to the same place no matter what. I recommend you go to the left ones first because there is a treasure chest on this side. There isn't really anything important um, on the other side. Um, so, I'm just, but it does not matter because you're gonna be going to the same place uh, no matter what you do. So, like I said, it does not matter which uh, staircase you're going to. But if you get over here, there's a monster horn inside this treasure chest. They're just handing out monster horns left and right. So now we can take these plants, and uh, just like the pumpkins at the Lumpy Pumpkin, if we stab them, they'll stick onto the sword. And there's a frog over there. So what we want to do is we want to throw the plant at the frog. Drink up, you stupid frog. Uh, 
Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to my friend, um, we were like hanging out and stuff, and I was talking about this one silly dream I had where, um, where for like, they announced uh, that they were going to be like, having like an, a bunch of new characters for Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, and one of the characters that they announced was the frog from Flipnote Studio. Um, it's been a long time, the, the dream happened a long time ago, so I don't exactly remember what the moveset of the frog was, but I do remember it was that it attacked with, like, the different art supplies found in the game, and it was one of the weirdest things ever. Um, I, I highly doubt the frog would ever be playable in a Smash Brothers game, um, and things like that, but, whatever. Um, but, but what matters right now is that, um... We now have the ability to fight these things if I don't fall off the platform. Um, we now have the ability to fight these uh, lava hand things, and so what we want to do is we want to go on top of this platform, poke the eggplant. It's not an eggplant, it's a water plant. What am I talking about? Um, wait for these uh, magma things to rise up, and then after we, and then after we throw the water plant, out, we can destroy the lava things. This is a really cool gameplay mechanic. I really love how you fight these things. It's almost as awesome as how the fight the Deku Babas in this game. Um, because you're like throwing water at them to cool it down, and then you slash at it, and you can destroy lava! It makes me feel awesome! And I sound like Batman! Yay! We destroyed lava! Something that should never be able to make. Something that should never be able to be possible, but it is possible because this is a video game! Yeah! Woo! Hey! I was watching you, pal! You were so there with those lava thingers. Thingers? What kind of word is it? <laughs> These guys have weird, say weird things. Hey, maybe you don't mind doing one more thing while you're at it. How about you get me down from here? I don't feel like it. Ask me next year. I'm just kidding. I'll do it. And you better like it. Oh yeah! I'm saved! I don't know who you are or where you're from, but I owe you big time. Are you here looking for treasure too? Yep. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you are totally caught up in that too, huh? I can see it on your face. You're here because of the legend of the sleeping statue, right? But those are some busted old digging mitts. You can't go using them for treasure hunting. I got it! I think I'm gonna give you a replacement pair for my secret staffs. Don't you go nowhere. Oh my god, Sine! All yours! They've been in a buried treasure chest, so they ain't dirty or anything. Now these are... ain't the kind that you can easily get your hands on just anywhere, so take good care of them. Right then, I'm out of here! So long! And with, after all that hard work, we get the Mugma Mitts! Even the Mugmas don't see digging mitts this fancy very often. And with that, we are gonna end this video off here, so... Thank you guys so much for watching this video of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Next time, we're gonna try out our brand new digging mitts. And until next time, we gear to you. Oh yeah.